Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm going to answer several viewer requests for information about how to remove the body panels on the R1200 RT. It's really nothing to be intimidated by. It's pretty simple. So we're going to go through the whole process. Now, this particular bike here is a 2012 model year. If you have a 2010 to 2013 model year, it's going to be identical to this. If you have a 205, 2005 to 2009 model year, it will be substantially similar. If you have a later model year, it will be a little bit different, uh, but some of the tips that I give you here may be helpful anyway. First thing we need to do is get rid of this trim piece right here, this silver trim piece right here. In order to do that, there are, actually you can see them right here, four bolts, two up here, and there's two here that are hidden behind the seat. So number one thing is to get the seat off. And with the seat removed, you expose these other two uh, bolts or screws right here. Now for tools, I like to use this little stubby quarter inch socket and it's a T25 Torx that we're gonna need. I have a long one here and I have a short one there, which I need for several areas. And you, if you don't have the long one, you can just use an extension either way. But I find it's easier to have uh, some longer reach in some areas. So I'll start with these two screws at the top here. I want to show you something. Hopefully this will get on camera. That's just engaging the screw right there. And look how little effort it takes or should take to loosen these screws. Almost nothing. Right? Nothing. I'm not struggling, not straining. You do not monkey these things down there. You do not need to do that. I'll talk more about this in a minute, but let me just get some of these screws off. And I often just get rid of the socket and then just, once I loosen them, just do this by hand. And once I get some of these screws off of here, I'm gonna show you a little more detail about the screw itself. So I've got those two loose. Now I'll come down here on the bottom and get those two loose. See how easily those twist off? They're not tight. And again, I like to switch to hand work here. It's just faster and I get a feel for the screw if there's any problem. Now this trim piece just lifts right off. I still have the screws in the holes actually. So I'm just gonna lift that whole trim piece off. And I usually leave these screws right in that trim piece because these four screws are the only ones that are different from the others. They're longer and for me, it's just easier to leave them there. Now let me show you something here at the top of the tank. Uh, this is one of the screws we're gonna be removing. Look at this little tab right here. The body panel actually hangs on that tab. It's like an alignment tab. Very important and very useful uh, when you're putting this back together. So I just wanna call your attention to that. Now I'm gonna remove this one screw right here because I wanna give you a close up. So here's a close up of one of these screws. This is a factory screw. It's a T25 washer head and these are stainless steel screws. So if you lose one, you can't lose a magnet to find it. Now don't be surprised if you find a screw that looks different than this because they do tend to get lost and people replace them with sometimes whatever they find. All right, with that out of the way, let's get back to the bigger picture. These body panels are made up of sections. So this is one section right here. This entire area right here is another section and I've already taken that trim piece off, you remember, and this door right here for the uh, uh, glove box is another section. So we're gonna take these off in sections. All right, I apologize for the fan noise in the background. I had to turn the heat on. I'm freezing in here. It's winter time where I am. So this section right here is what I'm gonna concentrate on first. Now, you don't need to watch me unscrew every single bolt in this video. It'll be a long video. So I'm just gonna point out on this section the screws that we want to concentrate on. There's one right here, okay? If I come down here, this is a tricky one, I have to say. There's two screw heads right here. The top one is what you need to unscrew. This one, you can leave alone. If I come down, oh God, the knees. If I come down under here, this is another trick area. There's a bolt right here and there's a bolt right here. All right, with those screws removed, I can now take the panel, I'm gonna lift up slightly. You may have to jiggle it a little bit depending on how many times this has been apart, but that panel now comes off as one unit here. There is some screws on the inside here that attach this black part uh, to the gray part here, but all that comes off as a unit. And already it exposes some areas that you may need to get to for maintenance, 
For example, if you do have trouble getting to the headlight bulbs, just having this off right here gives you more access from underneath. Now, one thing I want to stop and mention right here, this whole area right here has a bunch of headlights and, and uh, turning signals and that sort of thing. Uh, that's sort of a separate subject. I already did a video about how to remove this mirror section uh, so that you can get to bolts behind that in order to get to this turn signal. So there's already a video about that, so I'm not gonna cover it a second time. All right, we're gonna talk about this big body panel right here in a minute, but before we get to that, there is one complicating factor over here on this side, which is this door here. This door is secured underneath here by a screw here and a screw here. And actually, I lied before because I said all the screws were the same. I just remembered these two are slightly shorter. Now, <laughs> this is one area that you do need to be cautious about because these little screws here to get them out, they're kind of under this cover um, and you can't get this cover off until you get this door out of the way. Um, if you drop one of these screws, it is possible, and I know because it happened to me once, that they will drop down here into the engine bay and you'd think, oh, no big deal, I lost a screw. Except it is a big deal because the alternator is right underneath there with spinning parts and it is possible for that screw to bounce into that alternator. So this is one area where I'm always very careful to unscrew these by hand and slip a finger under there, I'll show you, to, to get a hold of that screw and make sure I don't drop it. The way I tackle this is to just get my Torx in there, unscrew it, I'm pushing against the head of the screw that direction till I feel it's about loose, then I slip a finger under there. And make sure I pull it out carefully. So this is the basic order. We got the trim, we got that piece right here, I'll call that the top piece, and we got the door out of the way. Now I can worry about the main panel. Now there's a lot of screws here. Some people end up counting them. I don't usually do that. It's obvious when a screw is still attached and it's in the way. So I'll just point out what we need to get to here. So around this door, there's a bunch of screws. There's one here, one here, and one here. We need to get those out. I'm sorry, one here too, that's four. And I already got this one earlier, remember, but it was there. Then there's one I always tend to miss up here. Uh, you have to have a little short torx in order to get to that one. This one right here goes through this panel and actually this other, this rear panel as well. And this one, you may see a little different. This one looks a little different because somebody lost it before I even got the bike. So that does look slightly different, but otherwise it would be the same. And then coming down here, you have one, two, three here. And then coming around, there's one here and there's one here. And I think, I think that's all of them. All right. Uh, yeah, that's all of them. So let me get all of those out and then I'll show you how we get this panel off. Once again, watch how little effort it takes to unscrew these. I mean, I'm not using a lot of hand pressure. Boom, that's it. So when you're putting this back together, let me just point out. So you'd be screwing this down until it got, that's tight. And this is how much more you're gonna go, like that. That's not even an eighth of a turn. It's not a lot of pressure you need on these. These two down here are the easiest to forget just because they're down low and you just don't see them. But I always make sure before I try to take the panel off that I've gotten these two. All right, I've got all the screws out. We're ready to rip and tear, right? Not so fast. There's several things you need to be aware of. One big one that I see a lot on the forums is this temperature sensor right here. We need to disconnect that sensor and the wire is routed through the panel. So if you're not paying attention, you could rip this right off. And I often see on forums where people <laughs> have this, you know, kind of hanging somewhere and they can't figure out where it goes. Well, this is what it's supposed to look like. So to get this out, first you want to disconnect the harness here. There's a little tab you're going to push in or squeeze. I really hate this part, but, and then just wiggle that out. And that is the connector, but the, the, the cable itself is routed. There's some little clips there. There's one in the front, so I lift that clip up and pull out the cable, and there's one in the back, which is easy to miss, and that pushes out. 
So now you have the cable completely disconnected. Now I'll just put this so it doesn't get hung up. The sensor will stay with the panel, but that cable needs to be disconnected. Now there's one more potential problem, which is if you have engine crash bars installed like I do, you gotta remember that this body panel goes underneath all that and it could potentially interfere. In my particular case, I'm gonna show you here, I can remove the body panel by twisting it a certain way and it'll come right out and I do not need to remove the crash bars. However, some designs, that's not gonna be the case and you may need to remove the crash bars or loosen them enough to get the body panel out. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Up here on top, when we remove this panel, remember there's that little tab right here. So we're gonna be cautious not to you know, drag across that tab and snap it off. We gotta lift the body panel up slightly and over that little tab right here. And the same time, this glove box has a rubber gasket around it and the key uh, sticks up you know, through here as well. So we kinda of have to lift the whole body panel up slightly to get you know, over these obstacles. All right, so I know all the screws are out. I'm gonna come over here and just lift slightly to get over those obstacles I talked about. So I'm over the gasket and I'm over the tab right there. And then underneath here, I need to bring this out and twist it. I'll show you, I'll twist it away. It could be a little fiddly sometimes. All right, so I got that out and loose now. Now this bottom area is where I'm concerned about. And if I twist it just exactly right, I get the whole panel out, okay? So if you don't have crash bars, it comes off even easier. But if you do, try that trick and hopefully it'll work for you. Now I started on this right side for a reason. Uh, this is the one you'll take off most often because, you know, the snorkel for the air filter is right here so you can get to the air filter. Uh, you know, have the fill plug for the transmission when you change that oil. Uh, if you're trying to get to the front splines of the drive shaft in order to grease them, that's right here. So there's a lot of stuff on this side. Now the other side is almost identical except for one difference, and that is this area right here. This panel, this top panel I'll call it, has a DIN port, and some people will have controls right here. I don't have those, but some people will. So. Everything is identical on this side, except when you take this top panel off, you just need to move it a few inches in order to reach behind there, disconnect the harness from the DIN port and from any controls you have. Now let me talk about these rear panels right here. Very rarely will you need to take those off. For me, I've only taken them off once, and that was when I was fitting these uh, crash bars on the rear here. I did need to get up underneath there in order to uh, do some stuff. So I did take those off. In order to do that, basically you'd remove the luggage here. And again, there's just a series of screws. This uh, handle, I'll call it, uh, has to be removed. And then you can see the screws for it right there. It's all pretty obvious. So basically you're just going to remove the screws uh, one by one and then pull that panel off. But very rarely will you need to do that for maintenance. This fender panel right here, uh, you, there's several bolts underneath, and then there's a couple tabs. I have another video uh, that I talked th about that when I was removing a front tire. And again, this front headlight assembly, this can all come out if need be. It's pretty rare that you need to do it, but I have other videos which have covered these things, so there's no point in doing it again. Same thing with the windshield. I've covered that in other videos, but very briefly, you have two bolts here on both sides, and then underneath that, there are two more bolts to take the windshield off if you need to do that. You'll end up with a pile of screws when you're done. These two are different. Those are for the glove box, remember, but otherwise they're all gonna look the same. Put it all back together is just reverse order. Not really a big deal. So don't be afraid to take these panels off to do maintenance. If this is what's keeping you from doing some of your own maintenance, uh, you should really get over that because it's very simple to do things like changing the air filter and doing some of the oil changes and that sort of thing. And being able to remove the fairing really makes all the difference between you doing it and having to have someone else do it.